I have this piece. I actually did not make this one. I purchased it at in or at an oddities convention. It's got a few issues. Um, some things I, I didn't really catch until actually I brought the piece home. When I saw the piece, I instantly wanted it, but I didn't pay attention to some of the things that it had going on. Like for example, um, it's not doing it now, but the, the magnets right here come out. I don't think they're glued on that well. And uh, also this color, it, uh, it doesn't really go with anything I have in my house. The, the pink is, though the pink goes really well with the octopus, it doesn't really fit in with the rest of my decor. Let me give you a close up of what the piece looks like. I'm going to be redoing it. Whoops, I just kicked the stand of my, um, from my camera. I'm going to be just uh, reworking the, the frame itself. I, I believe I can take it all apart. There's, there's just screws holding the backing in. And uh, see, that's the other thing, like that one's damaged. So it shouldn't be too difficult to just sand it and assemble it back together. Well, sand it, paint it and assemble it back together. I'm also not sure about these like little corner dec decorations, but I might remove those. I'm not sure. But the biggest thing is like I kind of wanted to make sure that when I open it up like this, the magnets don't come up. And right now they are not doing it at all. But I promise you these magnets come out and uh, you can kind of see little cracks in here where the screws were not pre-drilled. So I, I might work with that as well. Um, the the openings here are pretty pretty large like there and there so it's got just a few little things but i don't know how much of all of it i'm going to fix the biggest thing is i it just doesn't go with anything in my house yeah like the piece itself does you know match my home it's more so the color doesn't work out. So I'm going to see what I can do in regards to redoing this. I don't know that I can remove this or I want to remove this piece of glass because these seem to be nailed down. There's these tiny pinholes here and it looks like they are staples coming down into the, the wood. So I don't know that I want to really pull these apart and take the glass out. So, uh, so it's going to be a little bit weird as to how I'll be able to get all these, um, well, the edges right next to the glass redone. I actually have my own octopus specimen that I plan on making in a future video. I need to research a little more on it though. I, I don't really quite know how they, you know, make them all or how they get it to dry and what processes the octopus needs to go uh, or be under to get to this point here. All right, so first things first, I need to disassemble it. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew it from the back first, and then I'll remove the door because its head, oh, let me see if I can open it now. Its head right here touches the glass, and so I don't want its head to be moving around when I'm when I have it upside down like this, trying to remove the backing. So I'm going to see if I can pull him out or pull her out or whatever it is. And uh, I think I do that in like all my videos. I'm never really sure what they are, and I always call him she or he or whatever. So, anyways. Once I remove this and pull it out, I should be able to just work with getting the face off. Um, I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to, ugh, can't even talk. I'm probably going to be removing all of the hardware, like these pieces as well. Um, 
just so that I can just have the frame to work with. Now that I have all the screws removed from the back, this should just come out, I'm thinking. I hope I'm not missing anything. There it goes. Maybe. Am I missing screws? He's being fairly stubborn, and I don't know why. There's nothing holding it in place. Oh, I think I did miss a screw, my bad. And I almost broke the glass. It landed on the it landed on the screwdriver. I want to quickly show something. Do you see these where the little black screws these screws were going into? Um that's what happens when they are not uh, when the holes aren't pre-drilled, you end up with all this cracking. But this one's really bad. So when I put in the, the screw back in, I'll probably fill it with um, wood glue. I do really like how they did the hinges. Um, when you close this, uh, one sec. And so, sorry, I was kind of fumbling with the, with the camera a bit. So. Um, but anyways, that's all you see right there when it's closed. One thing that I noticed as I was flipping it over, this is damaged down here. And so I'm going to need to touch that up as well. Um, which by the way, my disclaimer, this is how I per this is how this piece has always been. I purchased it. Um, I'm just noticing the things as I go through it, but purchased it like this it's been sitting in my home without being really touched just hung up so I didn't do any of this stuff so what I'm going to use for that uh, little area that's busted up right there is this I'm going to just spread it there um, I also have the tape which I'm going to tape off the glass uh, don't mind the tape it's actually clean here it's just that I ran out of the blue painter's tape. Um, I'm working on a project with on one of my race cars, and so uh, I needed all that tape for, for that. So I dug deep in my toolboxes and found these, and uh, obviously since I work with cars, there's all the dust from, from that. So anyways, that's not the point. I'll quickly spread this on there. I, again, never used this, so I don't know what it's going to do, um, but hopefully it's enough to just kind of uh, make that kind of thicker there, and then I will sand it. Um, one thing about this that I was noticing is the wood is really, um, it's probably very cheap wood. I, from the looks of it, it looks like it's that type of wood that's a, uh, I always forget what it's called, like plywood type uh, wood that has the lamination on the outside. And so I can't sand this down too much and I can't tear into it too much. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm just going to rough this paint up and then lay the first color I want on it. Because I think if I go too deep, it's going to become very porous and it's just going to suck up the paint and also I run the risk of creating uh, dips if I don't pay attention to how I sand this. Um, just because again, it's really cheap wood, so really soft and it will um, fall apart at the, at the slightest pressure. All right, so I've spread it on there. Uh, definitely use gloves, it took a minute. Once it dries up, it becomes like, I still have some of my nail, um, it becomes like it just gets all over the place and so anyways there it is and you can kind of see in there so once it dries up um i'll just uh i'll begin sanding the entire piece i'm just going to wait for that area to kind of 
because I don't want to be sanding and then forget all about it and then come in here and while it's wet and then run the sandpaper through and have to start all over again. But I'll actually put that completely aside. This though, I'm going to tape it off so that I can sand like here and not mess up the glass. I'll also do that too in here as well. So this is now cured down here. Um, and I've got this piece taped off. I'm going to just take a fairly thin sandpaper. I don't know what grit this is. It might be 100, but I think it might be less than that. It might be 150. I mean, it does say 100 on the back though. Anyways, uh, this is what I'm going to take. I've got this piece all, whoops, almost dropped my camera stand. I've got this piece all sanded down. So at this point, it's just uh, getting this one done. And this one's super close. Um, you can definitely tell that I'm working with paint or sanding paint down. So once I get this one done, then the first uh, layer of paint will begin. Once you wipe them down, you can definitely um, see what you kind of have done. If we also look into here, um, the, uh, the wood starts to kind of come up. I don't know how well you can see that. So it started to come through. And so I didn't, obviously I did not want to go that deep. As I mentioned before, I don't know how porous this wood is. And so to prevent that from happening, I uh, I just thinned out this paint as much as I could, meaning that I just went until I started seeing uh, kind of like there, I kind of went um, too deep. So, um, and there's that corner that I fixed now, it's just all blended, uh, and it's all corrected and everything there. So, just a little more w uh, wiping it down. All right, so I'm going to use this type of paint here. It's all white um, and it's exterior paint. Um, hopefully it makes it so that it lasts a bit longer. Um, I have this little brush, so nothing too fancy. And then I'm going to just paint all of this white and this one white and wait for it to dry once I do that. I think I have to shake it up a little bit more though. All right, looks good to me now, so I'm going to get started. Okay, so I've got the, uh, both of them, they've got two layers of paint each, and I just noticed something here. There we go. Okay, maybe they aren't ready just yet. Um, I was thinking they were ready to start applying the final coat, but it doesn't look like it. So I'm going to give it a little more time, and then I will come back to them and apply the final uh, paint, which is going to be this black one in here. Um, this one I will also, I will probably only use one layer of this one because I do plan to do something else with this. I don't plan to just let the black be just the end coating on all this. All right, so moving on to black now. Good thing I taped that off or that would have been a big issue. Um, I got a tiny little bit there, but it's on glass, so it'll come off.
I've let both pieces sit overnight. Uh, I wanted them to, the, the paint was kind of sticky. So now it's uh, really dry and everything like that. So at this point, I'm going to proceed with the next steps, um, which is uh, doing something to this. I don't just want it all plain black. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just sanding some of this black off. I decided that I'm just going to make it look like that, give it that worn look. Um, so I'm going around the edges and I'm having just the white come out a little bit. I'm just exposing the white and I'm not going very deep down because if I go too deep, then I will remove the white and I will start showing the black of the paint that was left in there to kind of keep the paint from being absorbed um, into the wood. So I feel like this is kind of the best for this piece. If you can kind of see here. So I'm going to do that to the entire piece. Um, in some areas, I've kind of had the white come out a little bit more than in some other spots. Afterwards, I'm going to use an even finer grit uh, sandpaper and go over this. And then last, um, I'm still determining whether I'm going to clear coat it or if I'm just going to leave this color here that um, because this gets rid of the gloss and I kind of actually like the flat black color more than necessarily a, gl a gloss black. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing right now at this point. Okay, so I've switched over to 250 grit, I believe. And at this point, that's the last that I'm going to do with this. Um, if we were to look at it, it's pretty, it's now looking very like uh, giving that worn look. Um, in some areas it actually exposed too much. But um, if, if you were doing something like this and you came across something in, or you made this type of, uh, I guess, what's the word that I want to use there? Um, miscalculation? You could just uh, put black on there again and then send it, wait for it to dry and sand. However, I want my piece to look fairly worn. And uh, in some areas I want there to be, you know, inconsistencies with the black. So at this point, I do believe it's good to go. And um, I'm just going to move on to the next piece do the same thing to the next piece and after that I'm going to determine whether I'm going to clear coat this or not because if I do run some sort of clear coat it will create some a gloss a shimmer to this and so right now I'm trying to determine what I'm going to do in regards to that. On this piece, I laid the black a little too thick. And so I'm really having to sand down pretty hard. And this uh, this paint, um, because it is a, uh, it seems to be like a primer and a, um, and a paint mixed. So if I press down too hard on the sandpaper, it could technically chip off, um, like it, it could chip off the, the, the paint. You probably can't see it that well, so let me kind of show a close-up of what um, it looks like now. So once I run over with, uh, once I run clear coat over this, it should make all these little scratch marks uh, disappear. But first, I'm going to try to do a polish. I know I have a polish somewhere. So I'm going to try to run the polish through here and see if that will help so it doesn't make it so... Uh, because, if I, again, if I run clear coat or spray clear coat on this, it's going to become very glossy. I've decided to use rubbing compound. Um, and as we look here, it's super smooth now. 
So uh, the one thing with rubbing compound is you got to be careful and not tie, not scrub so much because if you do scrub um, quite a bit, you will get, uh, it'll act like sandpaper. So it'll start eating up at the paint. Uh, one quick thing I want to note is uh, if you, I don't know how well you can see them, but when you go like this, uh, you see still like marks going up and down. So I wanted to have that effect on here. Um, I wanted it to look like, once I sanded it, I wanted it to look like the, someone very, a very long time ago took a very uh, thick bristled, bristled brush and ran it through here and made the paint uneven. And now with time, the thin parts of the paint have chipped off. To kind of get rid of this effect, um, if you were not trying to aim for this, would be to not start off with such um, such thick grit, to just go with really, really, really thin grit, um, some, uh, or I guess not such aggressive grit. So probably something in like the 500 to 1000. That's kind of where um, I almost ended up finishing. Actually, I thought this was 250, but this is actually 500. So, um, so yeah. If you wanted this to just be smooth and not have these grooves in here or anything like that, um, which you can kind of see these marks, I don't know how well you can see these white marks where they, the paint starts to be kind of thinner, then that's how, um, that's the process to do that. I don't believe I showed this, but this is the raw, uh, the rubbing compound I used. And then I just used a paper towel. So I'd wipe it on first, and then afterwards I would remove it uh, with either a dry side like this, or um, if I noticed it wasn't thick enough, then I would just make only one pass with this. But as you can tell, it does eat up the paint. So um, I'm not using like a, a scratch pad or anything like that. That would just, uh, that would, or any type of um, electrical machine that would just r uh, rub this through. I'm really content with everything now. So I'm going to start just kind of taking everything I set up apart and reassembling it. You know what, I'm actually going to put the the other piece first, the door, and then I'm going to put this piece on. Um, it's not smart to put this, just because it's head, um, it's head's gonna be touching this. And so as I move it around, I don't wanna accidentally bump into something and then have the, uh, have it break off. What I've done here is I've uh, got some glue at the edge of this, like on the screw itself, and ran it down into the hole. I'm hoping that by doing that, that um, I'm able to run glue down to where those cracks were um, on the actual frame here. And hopefully that'll help with the cracking not splitting any, more, any further. I doubt it will, but um, just as a precaution to keep everything uh, from falling apart. I think that's it.